What's up everyone, Aaron Nagler here, PackersNews.com, live on Facebook late in the day on Wednesday afternoon. Not a whole heck of a lot in the way of recent Packers news, but always stuff to talk about. Thought I'd jump on here late in the day as is my want and see what's up with you guys. See what's on your mind, see what's going on in the world of Packer fans across the globe. We always seem to have a couple people checking in from around the world, uh, definitely throughout the country and throughout Wisconsin. So... What's up, everyone? How you doing? Uh, the Packers uh, gearing up for the start of OTAs and minicamps, and you can do the same by checking out the latest Packers podcast at PackersNews.com. Michael Cohen and Tom Silverstein, they go through the entire uh, roster and uh, get you ready for the start of organized team activities. Mike starts us off with, I really like that Cole Madison kid. He could be a late round steal. Um, he definitely got the personality to fit right in that in that uh, offensive line room. Um, obviously, you have to see when the pads come on what he's made of, but uh, his tape is promising, no doubt about that. Tony, what's up, man? How are you? Are the Packers done signing free agents? I mean, never really done. You're always looking. Uh, Gutekunst has mentioned it several times. You're always kind of, uh, you know, keeping your eyes and ears open. But I tend to think they'll... Um, head into OTAs with what they have. Now, that doesn't mean they're not making calls, they're not bringing guys in to work out, but um, I tend to think they're gonna wanna see what they have first before they sign anybody else. The lack of tight end depth is scary. Uh, yeah, it, you mentioned if there are any veterans available. I mean, there are some retreads like Antonio Gates, who's about a thousand years old, and Kobe Fleener did get released, although he is battling a history of concussions in the last few years. Um, yeah, I think they'll uh, look to see what they have with their undrafted free agents and um, let Emmanuel Bird possibly take another step. And obviously they're bringing back Kendricks and have signed Jimmy Graham. So uh, while it's maybe not the flashiest group, um, I think Bird could surprise um, if he takes a step. Um, and if you haven't yet read uh, Ryan Wood's piece on Emmanuel Bird and his journey to the NFL, I highly recommend it. That's up at PackersNews.com right now. With the addition of the tall, all the tall receivers, what's up with Michael Clark? Good question. We'll see what kind of development uh, he may have had over the offseason. I don't think he's out of the running by any stretch of the imagination. Um, what this does do is throw into sharp relief his um, lack of experience. You know, obviously last year uh, was the real kind of first full season where uh, he's in an NFL playbook. He's learning to play receiver. He was awfully raw coming in uh, as an undrafted guy in camp last year. But as anyone who has followed Packers News for a while will tell you, will let you know, um, he made just one outstanding catch at least every single practice that we got to see last year, whether that was in the spring or the summer. Um, every day, it seemed, he would make some kind of catch that would make you, the, the entire sideline would just kind of, turn and look and we did all look at each other and go there, there he goes again so obviously there's a lot more to playing receiver in the NFL than being able to make a catch a day but um, it's clear the Packers saw the potential there and they saw the athleticism and they're intrigued by it but now it's entirely up to him he's got to prove that he's gotten into the playbook uh, all off season. he's gonna have to come and show up and uh, make the most of every single opportunity and that's gonna be a theme throughout kind of the bottom level of the roster when it comes to that wide receiver group, you're not going to get a lot of looks. There are a lot of them, in, going to be a lot of them in camp. And, you know, the, the minimal uh, amount of reps that those guys are going to get, especially when it comes to playing with Aaron Rodgers, you've got to make the most out of everyone. And I'm talking, I'm not just talking about the plays where the ball comes to you. I'm talking away from the ball, uh, the adjustments at the line of scrimmage, reading coverages, uh, beating the man in front of you, regardless of whether the ball's coming to you or not. Every one of those reps is going to be on tape, and the coaches are going to be great and everything. Um, they got to take advantage of every opportunity they got. Any of the three rookie wide receivers get special team return ability to cause Davis to miss out on the final 53? Fred, I think the returner that Davis needs to worry about is J Jair Alexander. Uh, he has been a return guy and a very good one. Um, I think he's a little bit more electric than Davis is with the ball in his hand. Um, and he has shown a much better uh, 
sense of judgment uh, when back as a punt returner. So I think that's where uh, the real threat to Davis comes. Davis and Allison, the odd men out? Zach is way too early to, to even begin to guess. Uh, Davis is definitely uh, up for a, in for a big challenge because of what we were just talking about in the return game, and that has been his big contribution to this team. Um, I, I can't imagine him making it straight up as a wide receiver uh, if he's not there to return, if he's also not returning kicks. He hasn't shown much from scrimmage yet. Um, now, that could change. Like a come on, you never know. Uh, but the odds are long. Do you think Randall Cobb is really that dude worth $10 million? Um, I think you're going to see a big uptick in his production this year. Uh, mostly because, you know, Jordy Nelson is gone. That was Aaron Rodgers' big security blanket. Uh, Cobb is probably the guy that Rodgers has the most trust in, the most experience with. I still think Devontae Adams is your clear number one. But, um, you know, I think Cobb is going to get a lot more opportunities than he has the last few years. Now, is that worth the 10 mil plus? You know, as Brian Gutekunst said, sometimes uh, there, there's going to be a little fluctuation in uh, what guys are making in relation to not only their teammates, but around the league. But heck, you look at what Jarvis Landry got uh, in Cleveland and they, Cobb, Cobb's contract looks all right. Uh, especially since I consider Cobb a better receiver than Landry. Uh, seen the picks from the rookie camp and Patton had a huge smile. Does this mean he loves what he has? Uh, Mike, I, I don't think you can really garner much from one picture, but um, there were also some scowling pictures. Uh, as he told us when during his introductory press conference, his, his resting gaze is not a pleasant one. <laughs> so um, we'll see. I think you, you really have to get the pads on and start hitting some people before you even really begin to know what they have. Um, is Cobb and Montgomery's role the same now? Um, are they, in essence, competing for the same spot? I don't think so, simply because Montgomery hasn't shown an ability to be able to stay on the field consistently. Obviously, Cobb has had his nicks and bruises, but he has definitely shown an ability to play through uh, injury and play hurt, whereas Montgomery seems to get nicked up each and every game. Um, now, that said, you know, Montgomery clearly probably does his best work out of the slot, um, but he also works out of the backfield. Um, I tend to think uh, they can be complementary and can co coexist, um, but we'll see. If, say, all three rookie wide receivers make a big push, um, you know, maybe they, they look to make a move with Cobb simply because of the salary and because they think, as you're suggesting here, that they can get what they need out of the slot from Montgomery. I think that's a real long shot. Um, I tend to think Cobb is, is like I just said, is going to have a big year. And a lot of this questioning of his contract and his place on the team is going to die away. Matthews is gone next year, says Philip. Not necessarily. I definitely think uh, this is the last, you know, uh, clearly the last year on his deal. Uh, but if he plays as well this upcoming year as he did last year, I would not be surprised at all to see the Packers have him back. Um, you know, it really depends on uh, the numbers and what they can make work. They're clearly not going to re-sign him for uh, the $12 million or whatever it is he's going to play, play at this year. Um, but I think they would leave the door open to bringing him back. Um, again, it depends on how he plays. He is getting up there. You don't want to keep overpaying an aging linebacker, but um, he's still playing good football. And if he continues to do so, uh, he still has a valuable place on the team. What role will Bryce play? Andrew, Mike McCarthy indicated that he will be battling for the starting safety spot opposite Ha Ha Clinton Dix. I know a lot has been made since the departure of Morgan Burnett about Josh Jones, mostly because of his draft status, but you know Bryce will be in the thick of it. Now, Bryce was not exactly playing lights out football prior to his injury last year. Um, he's really got to step it up. Um, you saw a lot of promise that rookie year that really didn't come to fruition his, his early on last season. So, um, I think he'll be in the mix. We've all seen, uh, you know, from scrimmage, he is a big hitter. He definitely brings an intimidating presence. Uh, but there's a lot more to play in that position than just simply lighting guys up when you get the opportunity. Uh, I think he's got the goods. I think he can do it. Um, but, he, you know, he's going to have some stiff competition in Josh Jones. Um, 
will the Packers O-line be able to withstand the Vikings D-line this year? <laughs> Balaga is hurt every year. Yeah, I was doing a little film work on Kyle Murphy today. And actually, he played better than I thought. Um, I had kind of note, made, gone through my notes prior to watching and was kind of down on him. But a lot of his issues last year, I think, were correctable. When it comes to, you know, the Vikings and their defensive line, they're always going to struggle against um, Minnesota, especially coached by Mike Zimmer, when they're in their house. I think um, U.S. Bank Stadium is going to be a house of horrors for a while. Um, mostly because of the way the Packers play offense. You know, they leave those tackles out on an island, it becomes a problem. And I know people say, give them help. But a lot of times that's Rodgers sending guys out into patterns. He has said time and time again how he much prefers having more options out uh, to catch passes rather than to stay in trying to help block. Um, and because of that, that combination of Rodgers wanting more guys out in patterns and um, those tackles being left on an island, Zimmer knows this, man, and he he knows he can play coverage and just get after it with four guys because more often than not, the noise in that place, those tackles are looking inside. It's hard, man. Even guys as good as Balaga and Bakhtiari, that's a tough, tough situation to be in, down in and down out. And as Bakhtiari said on my podcast a couple years ago, you know, they only have to get home once, and they've affected the game. Uh, Bakhtiari can't afford to slip up one time, uh, like 60 pass sets sometimes. So, um I think the, the game against the Vikings in Minnesota is always going to present a problem, it's going to present an issue, and that's been that way since the Packers have run a West Coast offense with Mike Holmgren. You know, it's, it's continually been a problem, whether it was the Metrodome or U.S. Bank Stadium. Now, flipping it around, uh, in Green Bay, sh they should be able to handle them there. I absolutely think they have the talent and the goods to do it. Um, but, yeah, in Minnesota, they're always going to be a problem. Madison, a possible right tackle. Steve, I know they did talk about it. Um, he obviously played tackle in college. Uh, they, you know, have said that, that he will cross-train. Uh, John Eric Sullivan did say he will start inside. But, you know, try him out there. See what happens. The more you can do. And, look, I know everyone's excited because he's a draft pick, but there's no guarantee he even makes the team. Uh, he's got to be able to show that he can play. Um, and, you know, if he can play more than one position, so much the better. Uh, Balaga to guard, Nathan, never going to happen. He's a tackle. <laughs> What's your favorite kind of sandwich? Um, ham and Swiss. Ham and Swiss with uh, lettuce and mayo. Raji for starting right tackle. There we go, Franklin. Now you're talking. Would Petten be a candidate for head coach if McCarthy is let go? Ooh, that's a question. Um, you know, Patton did say he wasn't interested in head coach, a head coaching job again. But you never know what might happen if it was dangled in front of him. Uh, that said, I would tend to doubt it, but you never know. It really depends on the impression he makes uh, to Mark Murphy, uh, you know, during his time in Green Bay. McCray is a starter on the right side or is a sixth man? Johnny, I have said many times here and on Twitter, I think McCray is your starting right guard week one when they take on the Bears. Um, I think from what he showed last year, he's ready to do the job. Um, obviously, he's got to continue to develop. He can't just rest on his laurels. Uh, you know, the NFL is littered with guys who come in and flash early on in their rookie year and then come back in the second season and you think, okay, he's going to pick up right where he left off, and then they don't. So uh, that's a big part of that is up to McCray, but I, I absolutely think he – has the ability to do it, and I think most likely that's what they're counting on. Do Green Bay's defensive investments pay off this year? That's the multi-million dollar question, isn't it? Uh, one would think so, but the Packers have been throwing a whole lot of capital and draft picks and what have you at the defense for any number of years, and it hasn't. Now, obviously, we keep coming back to Mike Pettin. He's the big key. So if he can make what they've invested work, that will, uh, that will be the tail of the tape, so to speak. Would Tremont possibly lose the starting job midway through the season? I mean, it's a possibility. You can't say it's impossible. I would be surprised. Um, although you never know when the wheels are going to come off uh, from a guy, especially due to age. You know, Father Time has a way of creeping up on people. But um, if he continues to play at the level he was playing at last year once he was inserted into the Cardinals starting lineup, I would be very surprised. 
Thoughts on the Mark Ingram suspension? Um, I thought my friend Adam Rank at NFL Media put it perfectly. Um, when he said uh, prior to that suspension, Mark Ingram was his number one fantasy back. After that suspension, Alvin Kamara is his number one fantasy back. That's the extent of what I've thought about it. House is the one who doesn't need to start, says Daniel. Uh, Daniel, I tend to agree. I think he is very much a veteran depth signing. Uh, when that news broke, I said on Twitter that I wouldn't be surprised if he gets beat out. Um, it doesn't even make the week one squad. But uh, he is most assuredly there uh, because of his veteran status and because um, you know he has played in Green Bay for quite some time. They are bring him back on a cheap one-year deal. Um, easy to cut him. If, you've, if you determine you've got enough to get by without him, um, and easy to keep him if you determine that the young guys aren't stepping up. Michael, uh, running back, I've said again and again, I think Aaron Jones, once he demonstrates that he has learned and improved uh, the art of pass protection, he will run away with the starting running back position. Now, I still think Jamal Williams will get a number of carries. I think he'll probably even start camp as the de facto number one. But um, for me, Aaron Jones is just on another level. Much better vision, uh, more athletic, more explosive, more sudden as an athlete. Uh, Jamal Williams is a good back, but I think Aaron Jones is just uh, noticeably better. Uh, but again, the reason Williams got the nod in the first place is because of his ability in pass protection. The A number one job back there is to ensure that Aaron Rodgers is kept on his feet. And uh, until Jones demonstrates that he can do that down in and down out with consistency, he will continue to run second behind Williams. Uh, Jones had good flashes last year. You're right, Donnie. He most certainly did. Does Montgomery remain at running back? Uh, most likely. Uh, I think he'll play a little bit of both when it comes to wide receiver and running back, but they'll use him as a bit of a switch play. That's my, that's my suspicion. Uh, with the new additions from the draft and the off season so far, how does the season look? It's really hard to say until we see these guys put some pads on and you know start mixing it up a little bit, but I tell you what, on paper, they're contenders. There's no doubt about it. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers being back is a big part of that. I tend to think Mike Pettin is going to make a big difference on the defensive side of the ball. Clearly, injuries play a large part of the when it comes to this. We'll see how healthy they are throughout camp. But, um, you know, the, the schedule is tough, but I think they have the makings of a squad that should have at least a playoff run in them, if not a chance at a Super Bowl. Allison still has a chance to lock down the number three spot? Absolutely. Uh, the spot opposite of Adams is wide open, and you got to think he's the leader in the clubhouse. Uh, to step up there. Oh, Felipe, uh, Kofi is a guy who gets kind of forgotten about. Uh, late round pick last year, spent the entire year on the practice squad. It was really raw in camp last year. It really kind of, you could see early on, he was going to need a year. Uh, but, you know, maybe he steps up. Maybe he surprises. Uh, the, to me, the big thing is he's got to show that he's got some uh, ability to play both sides and, uh, you know, kind of develop some nastiness because he was kind of walked over a lot last year in camp. Um, yeah, he's got a, he's a bit of a forgotten man, but he's, the, you can't totally throw him away. You can't discount it because um, the Packers have a long history of guys who didn't look great early on and who developed and then became, you know, worthwhile players and even starters. So um, can't write him off. But he, he's got to hit the ground running, no doubt about it. Randy, with backup tight end, all in caps, lots of question marks. Um, I believe that's Lance Kendricks. He's your backup tight end, right? Um, if you're talking about you know tight end depth, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, Manuel Burr will be given every opportunity to show what he can do and that he's developed. Um, you know, here's the thing. With Bird, he came in really late in camp. He was, he was there... Late in camp, uh, didn't have the off-season program, uh, but even those first couple days, he made a number of really athletic, really impressive catches. Uh, one in particular over the middle where he had to stretch out and had to dive for it and uh, against cover two. And Rodgers has shown he's not afraid to throw to the guy. So, you know, I don't think that that totally means you can just discount the idea that they are looking for tight end help, but... 
Um, I think Bird could could solidify that number three spot um, with a strong camp. He's got the talent. Um, the Packers schedule looks tough midseason with back-to-back -back away games. I actually was just talking to Will Brinson about this on the CBS podcast that he does uh, this morning. I think that'll be out tomorrow, so make sure you check that out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the way that schedule sets up, it's kind of crazy. They could easily be, you know, 6-0 and and then all of a sudden be 6-4. and uh, It's tough. It's uh, That middle stretch is no joke. But look, I keep saying it in the offseason, late April, early May, you look at a schedule, you have all these ideas about it. Then you get to like week three and teams are not what you thought they would be. Uh, teams that you thought were strong are really struggling. Teams that you thought were going to be doormats are looking unstoppable. You know, that first month of the season, you're not really sure what teams are. And then they kind of coalesce and become, uh, the, you know, they find their identity, so to speak. Rogers talks about that a lot. Um, you know, kind of week five, week six. So you really just want to concentrate on that first, those first couple weeks and see what kind of squad the Packers have. Uh, watched All or Nothing episode against Green Bay. Great memories. I watched that the other day, actually. Um, Rob Marinelli saying they have to keep Rodgers in the well was, uh, was perfect. And, of course, he kills them on that third and six late in the game. Any chance we still look at Breland? I would tend to doubt it. I think they like their veteran guys, and they brought in, obviously, a lot of young corner depth. So I think they'll go with what they got. But you never know. Um, injuries could always, play, could always play a part as well. So I'll watch this space. <laughs> Let's hope Kamara gets suspended and the Saints are the new Browns. Well, I'm sure every Packers fan is hoping for that, as are uh, the Packers. Everyone in their front office, so they get a higher first-round pick next year. A Rogers deal, six years, $200 million, $120 million guaranteed. Sound crazy or correct? A little crazy. Uh, I would be absolutely shocked if Aaron Rodgers agreed to a six-year deal. Um, $120 million guaranteed? That doesn't sound crazy, but... Um, six years, mm, I'd be surprised. Why are Rogers news so close to the vest? I don't think it's so close to the vest. I think people are, there's just insane interest in it. Um, you know, there's, they're negotiating. We've been talking about this for about three months. And it's funny, someone on Twitter pointed out this morning, you know, NFL Network reported today, oh, a deal should be done by the start of camp. Well, Anyone who's been watching my Facebook Lives for the last three months can tell you I've been saying pretty consistently, you know, you should expect something probably by the end of the summer. You know, just that's when they have traditionally done uh, a deal prior to camp where, wh whether it was Jordy Nelson back in the day, David Bakhtiari a couple years ago, they like to announce a deal prior to the start of camp, adds to the kind of, you know, the energy, the promise of the season, etc. And I mean, what better way to pump up the fan base than to announce that Aaron Rodgers has been signed to a X number of years deal, uh, making him the highest paid player in the league. Um, here we go. Get ready for our Super Bowl run, etc. How many years do you think it will be on the contract? Matthew, you know, obviously the Packers will be pushing for as many as possible. I'd be surprised if it was more than five. Uh, I'd be surprised if the, pack, if the Packers did something akin to what the Vikings did with Cousins, which was a three-year deal, albeit fully guaranteed. It's interesting because, you know, Matt Ryan agreed to a five-year deal. Now he's a little younger, but, um, and it's nearly, not, you know, it's, you know, of the, I think, 100 million guaranteed, 96 is actually a true guarantee. Um, yeah, I, I would say four or five, most likely, yeah, for the Rodgers deal. Rashi is lead scout. There you go. You still have a man crush on Yancey. Man, it's still... It's, people keep teasing me about the Yancey thing, but I'm telling you, man, he can play. Now, he's got to get the opportunity, and he's got to make the most of it, but to dismiss him is silly. That kid can play. He just needs to uh, do it consistently, consistently with Rodgers at quarterback. But, heck, I mean... People want to get all excited about the rookies, and I understand why, but it's not like Yancey has just forgotten the offense. I mean, he's going to be a factor in this. Um, <laughs> you guys are funny. Favorite player to make a big jump this year, a la Blake Martinez? D'Angelo Yancey. I'm saying it just for Randy. There you go. Yancey pants. 
<sighs> Will Rodgers play a down in preseason? Good question, Felipe. It seems like we have this discussion every year. Um, provide, you know, after watching him go down last year, undoubtedly they will be very nervous about putting him out there. But I think they got to play him at least a few series. Um, but who knows? Maybe not. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Too many Raji mentions. It's time to go. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to your question, but make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. Got it all up there for you. Like I said, Tom and Michael just dropped their latest podcast, previewing the entire roster in front of the OTAs. Uh, make sure you check that out. Everything else regarding the Packers, it's all there. Uh, barring any breaking news tonight, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.